What's up guys, welcome back to Millennial Mint Actual Crypto. I'm BTC Spectre. Let's go ahead and get into our, we'll call it a weekly vlog here. Uh, we're gonna start off with our um, runs. I made the mistake of trying to wait to the last second to get as many fuel rod runs in last season and I missed out on 43 or so fuel rods. So that's my own mistake, but we're back at it. That was yesterday, the season just started yesterday, the new season. So we can do 50. So let's go ahead and get these runs in. Let's go ahead, while that's running, let's look at some of our collections. So Genkai, we'll look at Genkai and VXs. So Genkai floor is back down to 0 0.11. So um, last week, I actually swept the floor up to 0.159. And oh, this is interesting. It jumps very quickly, one, 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 two, one, four, one, five. So actually, yeah, this is what happened. This is, I swept the floor up to here and raised the floor by 35%, which is cool because for a couple of days, my entire um, Genkai collection only uh, went up by about $3,500. Um, I didn't realize any of those profits, which is fine because I'm in this for the long run. But we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more Genkai. And people are trying to get rid of these fast. I'm seeing a lot of people pop up in the Discord saying that they need to, um, they need fast liquidity. So that's probably what's going on here. But you can see that there's a quick fall off from 0.15 down to 0.11. So pretty pretty thin floor. Someone could come in here and and get all these for for less than one ETH. Um, let's see, 0.154 holding pretty strong. These were up to 0.17 the other day but there's a couple in here obviously people are going to wait till that floor comes up and then they're going to go right under just if they're trying to get rid of them and some of them might even be in a profit because these were going for 0.068 or so um, a couple of uh, weeks to months ago so let's go ahead and complete these runs and we're at 20,189 this will probably take us up to like 20,500 ish or something like that <clears throat> all right there we go Average is always about, with two level 20s, it's always about 12.5 per Kong per run. So about 25 uh, Kong Yum per pair, uh, team run. And it took us up to, oh, over 800. So that's good. That's really good. Uh, if we did a quick calculation, 2828 times 0 0.02, 416. So obviously I've been saving these up for a while. And uh, probably when this next season ends, I'll probably just commit what I have, unless it's an absurdly low rate. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to our TA and see what's going on in the charts. Obviously, we'll start with Bitcoin. So the last time we did a video, I believe, was on the 18th on this green candle. And so what we have since then is we went up off of the 20, back down, lost the 20, and now we're fighting to hold the 20. So for the bears, this is semi good news, but not confirmed for the bulls. This is, it could go either way. The, as you, as we talked about last time, the eight is really struggling to stay above this 20. Uh, this is a decent, uh, not only volume, but also a decent pullback from yesterday's or from the last video's close though, we're only about 1.24% up from there. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in real quick. Let's look at the four hour. So we're still above the 200. That's still bullish on the four hour. On the one hour, this is textbook sideways. Typically you'll see this uh, get narrower. So let's just see real quick. This is the highest and it's kind of slowly coming down and then the lowest about here and it's slowly, we'll go up to here, coming up. So we are in fact uh, narrowing as we saw in the daily the Bollinger Bands are getting closer and the and the pattern is getting closer. Let's go in. So the one hour we lost the 200, but you can see we lost the 200 here and came right back up, lost the 200 here, came back up and over, lost the 200 here and now we're right back to it. So if we want to see more continued downside, typically what you'll see is after a long sideways period, this 20 will come up right around the 200. So this might take another, you know, the rest of today for the 20 to come up closer to the 200 and then get a strong rejection, a red candle away from the 200. And if we get 
you know, this is still a big green candle, but if we get something like this, where the 20 is already under the 200, that could be a um, short-term bad news for the bulls. So let's see. So let's just say that we have a little bit more, goes sideways. For the next, you know, 24 hours, um, we could we could see that. Let's go into the 15. 15 is usually a good indicator. We have a lot of sideways, down, down, down. So we could easily see more sideways. Right now it's kind of pumping and trying. We're getting a little bit of consolidation here. So basically it's trying to figure out, can we break through or not? That's exactly what's going on here. Mm -hmm. I have my doubts just because of all of this downside. It looks like it is kind of keeling over. And because now, essentially, the uh, 200 on the 15 is below the 200 on the one hour. Right, so if we go like this, just kind of trace this line, and we see where it is over here. It's basically getting wedged between the 200 on the one hour, which is a stronger uh, point of resistance or support. And it's also interesting that the 200 on the 15 minute is coinciding with the 20 on the one hour. So that's that's interesting to, to see. I highly recommend mm -hmm. kind of like drawing some lines from different time frames. Uh, I never do more than two time frames at a time just so I don't get confused. But right now it's it's hammering away at this 200 on the one hour after we poked it, closed above, came back above. This is not a great sign for the bulls just because it dropped below and it didn't even have any momentum to come right back up. It stayed below. Now it's like slowly kind of crawling back up and trying. And basically we're gonna find out in the next 24 hours if it breaks through or not. On the daily, we actually have some bearish divergence. You can see here. Actually, this is our first one. Boom. To here. Here. To here. Let me just make sure that this is in fact lower. Yep, higher, lower, higher, lower. And then let's see what we got going on from here to here. So it's level, but the strength was less. And now I have a strong feeling that we are going lower from here. Like I would say 90% and here's why. This moving average actually, or this uh, RSI lost the moving average. It tapped the bottom of it. Now it's checking again. And that, and this time it's with less strength. Um, what would actually, yeah, I mean, that's, it looks like it's keeling over basically. So you have one, two, three consecutive bearish divergences. You have the price action is not moving up any higher after it already did that. So basically it's losing its momentum. And you could easily say that this is a little bit of an exponential move where it's climbing, 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 and then it shoots up. If we were to go to something like the weekly, then you can really see these, this, you know, relative parabolic move. I mean, this is, this is incredibly fast. And I don't think we've ever had more than eight consecutive uh, green weeks for Bitcoin in all of its history. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is something, uh, there's something to be said about that. So yeah, we'll see how that plays out. I would say more likely down than up from here. And I would say that that would probably last between uh, days to weeks up to months, uh, three to four months potentially. So we'll see how that plays out. Let's look at the market cipher B. So you can see this is uh, clipping here. We could easily see down to 30 to 32K. That's where I'm, I'm interested to see some support. Let's go to Sand, let's see what Sand is doing. Sand had some incredible moves. I'm actually kind of sad because I think I took some profits. Well, I'm not sad because I was able to roll them into some other things that did not go up. So uh, my Sand was up in value against those Ethereum NFTs. So I think I took some profits here at the 46 range. And uh, it came back and I was not actually in a position to buy more. I was allocating cash elsewhere, which is fine. And then it went up again, which is incredible, <laughs> by 47%, super cool. Now it's getting a bit of a blow off top, a little bit. Um, I wouldn't quite call that a blow off top. I mean, this is not a great sign, but at least it's still green. 
but on the higher time frames we are seeing the view app come down lower uh, basically a bearish divergence in the view app so here the view app is getting lower and lower and at the same time the price is going higher and higher so I would not be surprised if we come back at least to the 51 range but more likely than not this 44 range and if we're lucky I mean if we're lucky this is a lot of there's a lot of action in here I mean if we're really really lucky it could come back down to the 34 range I don't think so a lot of this dump right here I believe is when they um, unlocked a bunch of sand tokens or something so somewhere in here this 38 cent range I bought a lot and then uh, not at the 27 range I wish but at the 30 cent range I bought a lot so I've already moved a decent amount of that into some NFTs that uh, provide me monthly some monthly cash flow oh and we have a double tap here on the Stoke RSI now that doesn't mean any anything necessarily but a lot of times you won't get without a strong bull uh, bull run you won't get it you won't get um, a double tap or a, a triple tap I guess you could say it'll usually end up being some sort of divergence here like this right here that didn't work out um, trying to find something even in a bull market so here tap here tap and then it came way back down and that might be something that we're seeing kind of in this um, early stages of of a bull run although um, sand did top out way late uh, you know it, it took off at the last last minute so we are big picture about to start another bull run so um, if there are any pullbacks over the course of the next you know three to five months then I am super super interested in buying let's go in a little bit farther not quite super bearish not quite I mean I like this right here this move we could we could actually see a red candle form on the four hour from here and and poke below 56 I mean, it's still not awful and on the one hour still above the 200 on the 15 minute we're kind of riding underneath we'd have to see a strong rejection we're not quite getting a strong rejection um, we have this here with volume so this could be good and so far we haven't come back up above it lots of red lots of red we would need to see kind of we need to see a fat red from here from the 60 level um, if we want to see more continued downside and it, and it can happen obviously you see right here one 15 minute candle and it lost six and a half percent so it is possible so we'll just have to keep our eyes on that. All right, I don't want to keep this going for too long. Um, let's jump into the sandbox real quick, and I'll just show you a quick update that I did for Christmas for all of my um, Cyber Kong's friends. It was pretty, this was fun to do. It only took a couple of hours. All right, so while this is loading, um, MicroStrategy just bought an additional 14,620 Bitcoin worth $615 million. So it's very interesting that they uh, are continuing to buy Bitcoin. They now have a total, where did I see the total? It's like almost 200,000. All right, so they now have, MicroStrategy now has 189,150 Bitcoin. And some of us are still trying to just get to one. Uh, so it is cool to see I think and hope that uh, Michael Saylor is, is we'll call him a good guy um, He seems to stand for for good things from what I've heard him say in a lot of his interviews and stuff, but uh, Yeah, we'll see it's uh, there's a lot of Entities buying Bitcoin that are probably don't have our best interests at heart, but uh, It's good to see other people are uh, trying to compete with that so check this out I won't go and get all of them, but I made Christmas gifts for all of the for a lot of my uh, CyberKong's friends. So that's Apex. This is Coco. Everybody knows Coco. D Cortex. Let's see. I think I put one in here. This one belongs to Draco. Everybody knows Draco. Draco Valley. And we got one more over here. Mm 
Henry, obviously, Henry, the babysitter who puts up with all of us. So other than that, I don't think I made any major updates. Did I add anything? I feel like I added something. Maybe it was just that. Um, I added all of these water fountains. I think we already showed that. Oh, oh, I know what I added. I know what I added. Check this out. I don't think we sh we saw this last time. I got almost all of my VXs, and now I have 30. And they're all dancing here. Isn't this fun? So, I've been wanting to do that. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this for a long time, just for the vibes. <laughs> so there's that, that's the only update that I've made. So guys, let me uh, give myself a good background here. All right guys, so that's all I have for today. None of this is financial advice. It is just information to help you make better decisions on your own. Please do your own research. Um, please don't ask other people what they're buying and then just go and buy it. That is foolish and you will lose your money. Uh, nine, ninety-nine percent of the time you will lose your money if you just ask what people are getting. Um, even if you ask what they're getting and why, you still need to be very, very careful. You need to make sure that you've done the research and you have the conviction, not the hope, uh, that it is a quality product and that it will evaluate over time, that other people will see value in it. That's all I have guys and I will see you in the next video. Gonna take the